Allah Azza wa is acknowledging that you will not know from their outwardly behavior that there's something pure and beautiful going on on the inside. And that's when you'll appreciate the next ayah. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى And what would give you any clue? Diraya in Arabic, diraya is to take a alama, take a, some kind of indication or a clue, and from it arrive at a conclusion, discovery. In other words, to put it in simple English, you don't have any tools, means, no, no clue at your disposal by which you might discover لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى That he may have come to you to better himself. You know, when people come to you, especially if they're being obnoxious or they're being socially inappropriate, then your first thought is to think, why couldn't they act better? Don't they have, you know, the decency to do this later? Don't they see I'm busy right now? Like, all, this, all these thoughts come in your head about why are you talking to me so loudly? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Because we have certain norms we're accustomed to and they're not abiding by those norms. And Allah says, stop thinking this way. Acknowledge that there may be something really, their, their desire, لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى Hopefully he wants to cleanse himself, even just a little bit. And Allah Azza wa beautifully said, يَزَّكَّى here, not يَتَزَكَّى. يَتَزَكَّى means to completely cleanse yourself. Yazakka, the mudram form, is to at least start off cleansing yourself. Because in that one gathering, when the Prophet ﷺ will tell him one thing, you know, that one thing might be more, at least he starts on his road to becoming better. لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّى and in it, there's actually a very powerful um, hint for believers and for Muslims who want to better themselves. That you know, any reminder, you people, people often, I hear this all the time, what's the point of going to speeches and lectures and talks? No, nothing ever changes. There's all these speeches and nothing ever changes. And people are listening to all these lectures, but nothing, really, because you checked everybody's heart that nothing changes. I'm really glad you have that kind of vision. Because I, I don't. What's the point of all these conferences? All these people attend and they're like feel better about themselves and the ummah is still where it is. Thank you for letting me know that you have a hawk's eye on the entire ummah and what goes inside and outside. Tell me this, for those 950 years, what's Nuh doing? You know what you would call it nowadays? Giving speeches. What is the Quran in its entirety? Speech. That's what it is. Sincere words will do a few things. The best case scenario is that someone tries to make themselves a better person. Which is what tazaki is. To make yourself, to, to advance yourself, to take this advice to heart and to actually do something about it. And by the way, those who are impaired, like the blind one, do they have equal opportunity? They don't. So the few opportunities they get, they value them more, don't they? And so you may hear hours and hours and hours of stuff, and they may hear 10 minutes worth of stuff, but they took more advantage of those 10 minutes than you were maybe took, taking of hours of stuff that you heard or you learned. There's a difference because there's a, there's a rare commodity for them. They value it more, you know? But so the best case scenario is you actually do change. You hear something and it changes your behavior right away. But there's another scenario. And the other scenario is that you hear something and you're taking it in and you're pondering over it and you're thinking about it and you go back and think about it some more and this is actually what's called tadakkur. Tadakkur means that you, re you remembered it, it lingered in your mind, you, ha you haven't changed yet, but at least your mind has started to change. Your thoughts have started to change. So what's the other case scenario? أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ or you may take benefit from the reminder. Meaning you won't see an outwardly change, but something's happening on the Inside, you know, man khashi ar rahmana bil ghayb means a couple of things. The one who fears ar rahman in the unseen means on the outside you don't see them change at all. But something's going on on the inside. There's something taking place. You know, the change of a human being is often compared with the change of a plant growing. And the most important part of the life of a plant is what's happening under the ground. The seed is turning into roots and a stalk, but most of the, for a good part of that growth, you don't see anything above the ground. There's something happening, but all of it is in the unseen. Things are changing inside a person's heart when they hear something. But you don't, they don't walk out of here and become a different person right away. There's, there's time that's taken. It takes time to grow it and, and, and foster. And so, oh, yadhakkaru in the ayah is saying, okay, maybe he'll learn something and it'll improve him right away. That's 
yazakka or the other scenario aw yazakkaru or he will make an effort to remember later on and he'll apply this or think about it and it will foster other thoughts in him fatanfa'ahu dhikra then down the road that powerful reminder that you gave him dhikr dhikra is the mubalagh form of dhikr that powerful reminder that you gave him will actually be of benefit to him meaning even if it doesn't benefit him right now maybe it'll benefit him down the road in the future you know there it could be there there are things that i learned from my father when i was like 9 years old about giving charity at the time i don't have any money to give anybody i remember those things after i start making money and i remember those words of my father from when i was 9 years old in other words the reminder was given but you weren't able to benefit from that reminder until many years later that happens doesn't it Look at what happens with my favorite is actually the story of uh, of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam's father raised him. He was separated from his father at a very early age. Many years later he was in jail. Do you know this? So he like he was with his dad maybe by the age of 7 or 8 or 9 whatever that age was he was cut off from his family. Now he's being raised as a servant and he's a young man maybe he's in his 20s and now he's in jail. When he's in jail He talks to other prison inmates and he describes to them that he belongs to a family of noble prophets and he believes in Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq and he starts mentioning a lineage. Where did he learn that lineage? Where did he get that reminder from? He got that reminder years ago when he was a kid from his dad Yaqub. And it came to benefit others way down the road. Don't underestimate the value of sharing something beneficial. You know, like that I I argue every masjid every masjid every salah every single prayer there should be a 2 minute 3 minute some reminder some ayah of the Quran some hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam something of benefit something of benefit you never know what will what that seed will turn into what good that will bring for the kid in fa'at dhikr remind if reminder carries benefit as a matter of fact the entire Quran is called reminder for that reason we need this you can't just say oh i know it already i can't say that either you know we have to we need to be you know rejuvenated over and over again with reminder now uh, we we are up until now wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazakka aw yadhakkaru fa tanfa'ahu dhikra notice how much emphasis allah placed on what's going on inside the heart of abdullah ibn um maktum and allah didn't even say this is definitely happening inside of him he says how do you know He told the prophet, "Well, my Udrika, what would give you any clue? Maybe he wants to become a better person. Maybe he wants to benefit from the reminder. All of these are good enough reasons for you to give him time and attention." But the same is true of the other side, isn't it? I mean, the leader that he's talking to, he might want to benefit from the reminder. He might want to become a better person. That argument could hold true for the opposite end too. But Allah ends that argument himself and says, "Amma man istaghna." As for the one who feels like he doesn't need any reminder, istighna in Arabic comes from ghina. Ghina means alladhi uh, alghani alladhi la yahtaju ila ahad fi shay, wa kullu ahad muhtaju nilehi. Ghani in Arabic means someone who doesn't need anybody else, and everybody else seems to depend on them. That's a ghani. Okay, they don't need anybody, and everybody needs them. meaning super wealthy people super influential people everybody's waiting for their decision they're depending on them they don't depend on anybody they they set the schedule for everybody nobody can set the schedule on them it's th- those kinds of people but allah didn't say amma alghani he said amma man istaghna as for the one who feels like they don't need anyone as for the one who feels like they're above and beyond any need any dependence This is Allah highlighting not what this person is doing on the outside but what they feel on the inside. Allah is actually taking us inside the heart of the audience of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a camera angle that you and I are not capable of. We don't know what go- goes on inside of a person. But Allah does. So Allah offers insight to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's ironic that Allah showed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the blind one may have good in him and you are blind to the evil that is inside this person it's it's pretty ironic now this is tighna of a person this is highlighting people who will never benefit so let's first talk about the universal value of this attitude man istaghna there are, i've met people like this actually even more recently muslims um at one convention somebody came to me and said why do i need islam 
Tell me what, what, what does it bring me in my life? I have a job, I have a family, I have health, I'm happy everything, everything that I do, I'm happy with. I go to sleep happy at night. I don't really see that I have a need for religion. I don't know why I need it. That, by definition, is a stigna. I don't need it. I have everything already. As if you, your material needs and your emotional needs being fulfilled is enough for you. So let me try to answer that in a, maybe a contemporary way. I haven't talked about this previously in this way, but I, I feel it's important enough that I highlight this for you. Hopefully this will help you, inshallah, in some other aspects of your life too. You can think of it from the Islamic point of view that we are, human beings are made up of three things, okay? We're, we're a physical body, so we have physical needs. We are an emotional creature, so we have emotional needs. And we are a spiritual creature, and so we have spiritual needs. So there are three kinds of needs. Physical, emotional, and spiritual. These are all connected with each other. They're all intertwined with each other. I'll give you a simple example. If I didn't have lunch today, what need did I not fulfill? My physical need. Because I didn't have lunch, I'm cranky. What have I just messed up? My emotions. Because I'm cranky, when I prayed, I didn't concentrate. What did I just mess up? The spiritual. But the problem wasn't that I have no khushu and salah. The problem was I'm in a bad mood. But the reason I'm in a bad mood is because I didn't eat. So the physical can affect the emotional, and the emotional can affect the spiritual. They're all connected with each other. When somebody comes along and says, I have no need. And they say, I have no physical need, and I have no emotional need. What are they denying? Spiritual. That they actually have, in fact, spiritual needs, but they are blind to it. And you know, this, these three things are important to understand for every Muslim, because a lot of times you have an emotional problem. You have an emotional problem, and you're trying to find a spiritual solution. Or you have a physical problem, and you're trying to find a spiritual solution. Or you have a spiritual problem, and you're trying to find a physical solution. You have a stomach ache, which dua should I read? Uh, you have food poisoning, go get yourself checked in. <laughs> then make dua too. The spiritual only works if you understand that there are Allah, Allah created uh, laws and principles for all three of these. You know, there's, if, if you're in an abusive relationship, then it's not dua. You have to take care of the emotional abuse that's happening. And on top of that, there's dua. And by the way, what, does the, what is the, the, the role of the spiritual? The role of the spiritual is that it, it guides your emotional needs and it guides your physical needs. So you don't let either one of them override the other and go in imbalance. That's what the role of our spiritual life is. You know? And so th when people come along and say they have no need, it's actually because they don't realize that there's something inside them, deep inside them, that is hungry for spiritual fulfillment. They've just reduced themselves to n nothing more than an animal. As for the one who feels like he doesn't need, I am already full. I don't need anything else. What, is the Prophet, uh, what does Allah say to the Prophet? فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى I love this ayah. فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى The way you can say this, you know in Arabic they have a principle, it says خَيْرُ الْكَلَامِ مَا قَلَّ وَدَلَّى The best way to talk is you say the least words and you get the point across. And you could do that in Arabic in this ayah as, as follows. فَتَتَصَدَّى لَهُ Done. Two words. تَصَدَّى لَهُ Quran does what? أَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى Turning it into a jumla ismiyah. I'm making you feel bad that you don't study Arabic yet because I want you to learn this stuff. So you appreciate the taste of Qur'an. Turning this into a jumla ismiya, what does it do? You of all people? You? And for him, you are giving an extra ear and you're relentlessly pursuing him and you're so interested in getting his attention. That's the word tasadda. Before I go further, I want to explain to you what tasadda means, where tasadda comes from. As-sada huwa hadha ta'ir alladhi yasirru bil-layl wa yaqfizu qafazanan. The, the, a bird that is very relentless and annoying at night that keeps on chirping and it goes from, jumps from one branch to another and keeps on chirping and won't, won't be quiet is actually called a sada. Sada is also the echo uh, that you hear at a valley. If you say hello and you hear back, hello, 
Allah, Allah. That's sada, okay? The echo. And from it comes the verb tasadda, and tasadda actually means a ta'arrada, wa huwa alladhi yastashrifuhu nadiran ilayhi, when somebody keeps going back to somebody, like an echo keeps coming back, or that bird doesn't give up, you are so relentless to find any opportunity to meet with this elite guy and get your message to him, you're so concerned with him. By the way, Allah told the messenger to be concerned with him, but now Allah is saying, in comparison to that blind sahabi who everybody thinks is, is worthless, Compared to him, this guy deserves no attention from you. You should try to get his attention? No, 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 no. It should be the other way around. You are the messenger of Allah. You carry the word of Allah. It's far more dignified for you to, to try to go to, towards him. And so Allah says, وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَى And this, by the way, فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى is a shock too, ta'ajjub. You, you can't do this. You shouldn't be doing this. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَى means two things. You're not going to be held responsible if he doesn't become a better person, let me tell you. And I mistranslated on purpose. I said, if he doesn't become a better person, right? I said, if. I'll, I'll mistranslate again and, tell you, I'll, and then I'll correct it. The uh, one meaning is you won't be held responsible. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ also means you're not a criminal that he doesn't become. If he doesn't become a better person. If he doesn't cleanse himself. <coughs> now let me correct that if. The Arabic would have been, وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِنْ لَا يَزَّكَّ وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِنْ لَا يَزَّكَّ وَلَكِنَّهُ قَالْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَنْ لَا يَزَّكَّ There's a huge difference between the two. On the one side it would have meant, you wouldn't be held responsible if he didn't purify himself. But that's not what Allah said. Allah says, you won't be held responsible now that I know, not, and I'm letting you know he won't be purifying himself. The fact that he's not going to be purifying himself is not holding you responsible. In other words, Allah did not make that if it might happen, it's not going to happen. I'm telling you what's going on inside this guy's heart. Allah passed his verdict on this person. This is important for us to recognize because only Allah gets to pass that verdict. You don't get to use these ayat for anybody. Because only Allah can know what's going on inside someone's heart. And sometimes Allah will let you know and sometimes Allah won't. You notice in the previous surah, you found Allah did not let Musa know what's going on inside Fir'aun's heart. Allah said, لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ Go remind, maybe he'll become, you know, وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَى فَقُلْ هَلَّكَ إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّى Tell him, maybe, can I invite you, you might become a good person. Speak to him softly, you remember that? Meaning Allah didn't say that, and Allah could have told Musa alayhi salam, look, Fir'aun lost cause. Let me tell you, if there ever, ever was a lost cause, it's this guy. Nope, didn't tell him. But in the case of the Prophet sallallahu right now, he told. What are we learning? We're learning only Allah gets to decide when he tells and when he doesn't tell. Which means this is out of our hands. This is not on us. We cannot know what's going on inside somebody's heart. We cannot know whether they're beyond hope or they have this attitude that they don't need, or whatever. That attitude, if it's really deeply rooted in the heart, is only known to Allah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى Now, the amazing thing, Allah comes back to Abdullah. The surah started with Abdullah, he's blind, he came to you. How do you know he doesn't want to benefit himself? Or maybe later on he'll benefit from the reminder, remember all of that? Now he comes back to Abdullah again, and says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى And as for the one who came running to you, the one who came to you with so much effort, Ja'aka Yasha, by the way, it's playing off of what we already learned in the previous surah. I have to hold myself back. My, the, my, my principle right now is I want to try to explain to you what's going on inside one surah comprehensively. And I want to finish the entire Quran that way eventually. And then talk about the connections between surahs. Because there's lots of connections, but I want to hold back on that part. Uh, because I, my theory right now is I want to understand the architecture of each surah well before I compare it to what came before and what came after. Now some of those connections you can see very easily. So sometimes I can't help myself. Like for example, you know, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى The day a human being will remember all the efforts that they made. Speaking of effort, did you see this one who came making effort to you? أَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى As for the one who came to you running, making effort. وَهُوَ يَخْشَى and he's full of fear. He's full of fear. Now there's two verbs here, running and fear. If you notice, these two verbs occurred in the context of the Pharaoh in the previous surah. Right before, Allah said that he, he was running in the wrong direction, basically. 
And the hope was that he would become fearful. He was the opposite. Now you're finding this, he, and he, one of the most powerful human beings that ever lived, is outdone and outshined by a blind man in this surah. Because he has both of those qualities in him. He has, on the, on the one hand, جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى And then, وَهُوَ And on top of that, he's the one who's full of fear. He's the one that's valued. وَهُوَ يَخْشَى So beautiful how the Qur'an rearranges class society. To Allah, the people of value are the people who have fear of Allah in their hearts. That's valuable to Allah. Nothing else is of value. No, 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 no status in society is of value. There's a reason we have rows in prayer. Not determined by your economic status, your ethnicity, the clothes you're wearing, is none of those things. That doesn't determine where you stand in salah. When we stand in front of Allah, we all put our head down the same way. We all stand with humility the same way. All of our designations, doctor, student, high school dropout, you know, homeless person, all of those disappear. We're just slaves. Five times a day, we're reminded you're no different. You're no, no different. And that should actually, it's not just an exercise in prayer. That's an exercise in how we should deal with each other. But it's very hard to do that. It's really hard to do that. You, sometimes you meet people and they want to be treated special because they really are convinced that they're very special. Because of the money they make or because of the fame they have or because of whatever else. And they really, they, they expect it. I can tell you, I met people like that. And I don't make them feel special. I make them feel normal. And they don't like that very much because normal is offensive to them. One, I won't name people obviously, but you can come to me and say, Assalamualaikum, do you know who I am? Well, I'm, yeah, nice to meet you. That's it? <laughs> uh, yeah, want to get some pizza or something? What do you want me to do? I'm not gonna fangirl you like, ah, like I, I, don't, I, I don't do those. I don't do those. The only time I get nervous around people are, they're not even famous, but they're incredible scholars that I've learned from, that whose, whose, whose character, whose knowledge, whose wisdom, whose advice humbles me. And when I'm around them, I, I, get, I get shaky, you know. But other than that, no. It's, it's no big deal. We're just normal. And then some people try to do the other. I'm not gonna treat you like anything special, so I'll go out of my way to insult you. <laughs> you don't have to do that either. Like, put me in my place. I'm already in my place, bro. I don't need to put, get put in my place, you know. So, وَهُوَ يَخْشَى on this, and, and, and by the way, in the previous surah, something so beautiful, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا You are a warner meant for the one who will be fearful. Your role is to serve the fearful one. And now the fearful one is the blind one. So you should be at his service. Our Messenger is told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Allah says, فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَحَ Same sequence. And you of all people, you the Messenger of Allah, you are distracted away from Him. Allahu huwa kullu shay'in shaghalaka an shay. Anything that takes you away, preoccupies you from something else, is called lahu. Talaha, you are going to be even the least bit distracted from Him. He's the VIP, according to Allah. So many ayat are about Him. And I want you to appreciate the contrast between the ayat. The first few ayat were the fact that he's blind, which means he should be given courtesy. The fact that you don't know what's going on in his heart, so you should give him benefit of the doubt. Which is from the human point of view, you don't know. All you know is that he's blind, so you should be courteous, and you should give benefit of the doubt. But by the end of this passage, Allah says, let me tell you what you don't know. Let me tell you that he came from a long distance and made a lot of effort to get here. Ja'aka yas'a. Ja'a means to make a lot of effort to come somewhere. And yas'a means to put a lot of effort in it. On top of that, the extra effort for being blind. And his enthusiasm is captured. Then on top of that, wahu yaksha, And he's fearful of Allah. He, he, not the other one, is fearful of Allah. Who will know that a person carries the fear of Allah in their heart? Only Allah can know that. So Allah is now telling you, in addition to the benefit of the doubt you're supposed to give him, I'm gonna put my stamp of approval on him, and I'm letting you know he's actually fearful, certified by Allah. Oh, huwa yakhsha. Can you imagine someone mentioned in the Quran, who Allah says is fearful of Allah, guarantees their khawf, their khashiya. What a remarkable honor given to Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. If you would think these are, these are ayat that insult him or humiliate, no, 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 no. It's the other way around. 
It's the other way around. You know, every time he used to meet the Prophet Sallallahu every time. Do you have any need? Is there anything I can do for you? Anything, just tell me anything I can do for you. Every time he'd walk in. You know? Anything at all. And then he would say, مَرْحَبًا بِمَنْ عَاتَبَنِي اللَّهُ بِهِ I welcome you. You're the one that got me in trouble with Allah. You're such a VIP. I got in trouble with Allah because of you. You're a big deal. Every time he'd come, can I get you anything? Are you okay? Can I get you anything? Every time he'd be leaving, hey, before you go, can I get you something? Is there anything you need at all? Like he got VIP status from Rasulullah for life. For life. And he was left in charge of Medina a couple of times. Istikhlaf of Medina was given to him a couple of times. Because the Prophet highlighted him that much. And you know how, the, uh, how, how Allah said, and you got distracted from him? And what does the Prophet do his entire life? He was never distracted from Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. Always extra care for Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. It's an incredible, beautiful thing to, to, to read about. Hey guys, you just watched a short clip from this surah. What I want you to do now is go through the entire surah with me. It's called the Deeper Look series and you can catch it on BayinaTV.com under the Deeper Look section. So get started.